today, June 19th, 2020, marks the 155th anniversary of Juneteenth. Although many Americans, including our President of the United States, are only recently learning of the historical significance of this day, millions of Americans recognize that Juneteenth is the day that Union General Granger finally bought the word of freedom to enslave blacks in Texas. We know that on this day, General Granger declared that enslaved Africans and their descendants in the United States of America would be forever free. I stand before you surrounded by public servants of great note and dedication. I stand before you as the fourth generation descendant of Georgia slaves. I stand before you as the CEO of DeKalb County, Georgia, the fourth largest county in our state. I stand before you in solidarity with the brave men and women who sacrificed not just their time, but the generations who sacrificed their lives to bring us to this point and to this place. I honor them, I celebrate them, and I thank God for their determination and commitment. We are here today. And so as the CEO, I proudly announce that on this day, pursuant to the order of the Honorable Judge Karen Siegler, the DeKalb County government, in cooperation with the city of Decatur, has removed and properly stored the 30-foot obelisk that was erected on this property by the United Daughters of the Confederacy in 1908. And you will hear from Ilawi Davis and others who made this day possible. And we will celebrate this day as we should, because on this day of freedom, we also declare that the Decatur Square is free of a monument that represented intolerance and bigotry and enslavement of generations of people. But as we celebrate, I encourage my fellow DeKalb County residents not to forget, mm. not to overlook the fact that if we are to continue to progress, we must be a bridges of cooperation. We must open the lines of communication with those who may disagree with us. And we must rededicate ourselves to working together to fulfill the commitment the idea of freedom and justice for all. And on that accord, I want to reassure the members of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, as well as other heritage groups, that I am committed, and I believe the DeKalb County government is committed, to working with you to find and to relocate this monument that was removed to a more appropriate location. I'm committed to working with all people of goodwill, because I have been told by my good friend Larry Johnson that in order to be understood, you first must exercise understanding, that we will not judge because we seek not to be judged in terms of our own ideals, our own hopes and dreams. I want to acknowledge the collective efforts of the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners who worked tirelessly to seek a resolution to this problem. Standing with me today 
is Commissioner Jeff Rader, Commissioner Lauren Cochran Johnson, are my other commissioners here. But I will also acknowledge in the absence our presiding officer, Steve Bradshaw, Commissioner Larry Johnson, Commissioner Nancy Jester, as well as Commissioner Marita Davis Johnson, as well as Commissioner Kathy Gannon. Please give them a round of applause. I want to acknowledge the, the dedicated and visionary leadership of my friend, the mayor of the city of Decatur, the Honorable Patty Garrett, please. Yeah, huh. And if you will, Mayor, if there are members of the city council who are present, please uh, recognize them. Whoops. Get rid of this mask for a minute. Um, absolutely. Um, what an honor and a privilege it is to be here this morning and to stand and see the uh, the gazebo so clearly in the background. <laughs> and um, it is a beautiful sight. Um, this, to, to see what is missing. So um, I have with me this morning the Mayor Pro Tem, Tony Powers. Um, Commissioner Kelly Walsh. Commissioner Lisa Meyer. And Commissioner George Dusenberry. So. I will give my um, thanks to the DeKalb County Commission and also to the CEO. It is a pleasure to work with the CEO and the Commission for the betterment of the city of Decatur and all of DeKalb County. So thank you all for being here at this wonderful celebration this morning. So many people, a racially diverse cross-generational coalition of individuals and groups here in Decatur and across DeKalb County and across Metro Atlanta came together to make their voices heard through protests, through writing, through, through speeches, and a relentless, determined effort to address an issue that had festered in DeKalb County for years. And the person who's been most vocal, most uh, committed, is an amazing attorney a young man who always speaks truth to power, even if that power sits in the CEO's office in the Maloo <laughs> building. And uh, I want to recognize and introduce my friend, the Honorable Attorney Malawi David. <laughs> I only think, I think it's appropriate if we start as we start all of our gatherings. Power to the people! Power to the people! Power to the people! I am so thankful that this day has come. And this day is really a culmination and a people's victory. Sister Fanta High and Paul McClellan have chaired this work. And they have been relentless on pressing us to keep up the fight. They would not, because there are all kinds of manifestations of white supremacy that have to be addressed in DeKalb County and in the city of Decatur, in the state of Georgia, and in this country. But they continue to press us to stay focused and make sure that we move forward. We want to thank Hate Free Decatur and those who came after Charlottesville and came into this space to start a nonviolent protest that began with a petition and developed from there. So for all of our Hate Free Decatur <laughs> folks. <laughs> but at the center of it all, as any great movement, has to be the young people. And it was the Black Student Union at Decatur High School and the students in the Decatur Housing Authority who came out and led us in 2017, marching through the streets. <laughs> Daxton Pettis is our current co-chair. And there's so many of them. 
And so it sends a message that there have been some contentious conversations <laughs> with the, our, our brothers and sisters, both in the county commission, in, county commission office, as well as the city. But the reality is, is that we made some choices and elected some folks who would listen. And they did listen. And it was a struggle. And we went back and forth, but they listened. They issued resolutions. They didn't take it personal. They understood that it was bigger than them and that it was really about the community and what our future and what we want for our children to look like. And so we just are so thankful. And I just want to close with us recognizing where this momentum for this moment came from. It came in the life and death of George Floyd. It came in the life and death of Breonna Taylor. It came in the life and death of Rashard Brooks. It came in the life and death of Ahmaud Aubrey. And it is in that energy that has swept this country to challenge white supremacy and change the structure. Yeah. So while this is, some people say, only a symbolic victory, it's much more than that. It's a reckoning with history. Because if we're going to address the things that are happening to our young people today, it starts with us correcting history and making it clear that what stood out here does not represent all of us. And we know that it was erected to send a message to our ancestors that their black lives didn't matter. But today, we are able to say to our ancestors and to our children's children that those black lives mattered, and we continue to matter, and we will continue to struggle for justice and equity in this city, in this county, in this state, in this country, and in this world. Power to the people! <laughs> Turn to David kind of remind me of myself when I was a young man. But, uh, <laughs> next, I want to us, I will acknowledge it, but I want you all and myself and others to celebrate the men and women in uniform who stand with us today. We have the finest, most dedicated, hardworking protectors of our community standing here today. In many community, communities, there may be a gulf, but there is no the gulf in DeKalb County, Georgia. Let us give a round of applause for our police, our sheriff's department, as well as the city of Decatur. Thank you so much. And finally this, the attorney Davis said something. We've corrected a historical wrong, but to remove the wrong only leaves us with no history. So to that regard, there's some, two things we would like to announce. In July of 2019, the DeKalb County government commissioned the Georgia Historical Society to do a survey of all historical markers in DeKalb County. There are 81 historical markers in DeKalb County, including the one that was removed. All of those except eight deal with either the Civil War or World War II. What we are proposing and what we will do over the next two years is not take down the remaining 80 markers, but we are going to add 25 additional markers that will create a more inclusive history. See, history is here for us to learn from so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. So what we must do is correct the wrongs, but we add by not just subtracting, we add by creating a history that recognizes the contributions of African Americans and people of color to the growth and development of DeKalb County. We need markers that will designate and celebrate Flat Rock, a community of former slaves and slaves that existed in 1822 when DeKalb County was first incorporated, but not a single marker exists. 
We need a historical marker that will celebrate the accomplishments of Shermantown that were built with the labor of former slaves that came together after Sherman marched through Decatur and through Lithonia on his way to Savannah to the sea. What we must do is not just tear down the wrong, but we also have to commit ourselves to building up the right. And we do that through research, through analysis, and through celebration of those who came before. The second thing we will announce today is that two years from now, in 1822, the cab will celebrate its bicentennial. Two years from now. What we need is a revised, we need an inclusive history. And to that fact, I have commissioned two renowned historians in DeKalb County to write and to celebrate a new history for DeKalb County in commemoration of the 200th anniversary, the bicentennial of the birth of DeKalb County, Georgia. It will be a history that celebrates the Native Americans who lived here before anyone else did. It will be a history <laughs> who celebrates the enslaved and the free blacks who lived here. It will be a history that acknowledges the contributions of those who fought in the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812. It will be a history that, and yes, tells the truth about those who fought in the Confederacy, as well as the Union super sympathizers who aligned themselves with the North. It won't always be pretty. We won't always like what we read. But the important thing is, it will be based on fact, and it will be based on truth. And it's through truth, that is what will ultimately set us free. Now, the statute is gone, but COVID infection rates are still rising in DeKalb County. The statute is gone, but 156 DeKalb County residents have already succumbed to this deadly disease. The statute is gone, but we will still need to distribute food to the hungry in Clarkston this morning. The statute is gone, but we will still need to train and pay and make sure we have a police force that can protect law-abiding citizens in this county, in this state. The statute is gone, but racism still remains. The statute is gone, which tells us we can make a difference. If, if, if students at, at Decatur High School can envision a place and a time without the statute, we can envision a place and a time when we don't turn on each other and turn to each other. So let us go forth from this place, renewed and inspired, on this Juneteenth day, recognizing the past, but more inspired than ever, then march towards a better and brighter future. Be safe, be peaceful, and be blessed. If there are questions for any other people here, the mayor, uh, Attorney Davis, uh, and others, uh, please feel free to ask. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Are there any concerns that there may be any kind of uh, judicial motion or order that you would enforce Well, the case is ongoing. And my county attorney always instructs me not to comment on active litigation. Uh, but I can assure you that the Cap County's uh, government, through its county attorney's office, will do everything within their legal power to ensure that the monument that has been removed will remain stored and hopefully replaced in an appropriate location because it does have historical significance but it's not the type of significance that should be displayed in a public square. Yes, I was curious to know if um, BK 
the Hill will have a say in what does get erected here in the square? Well, there's been no discussion, but if I know Attorney Davis, he will have a say. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what we really need and what this is and always has been, and I've had some brief conversations, is this is a gathering place. It's one of the few common spaces we have where people of all races, colors, and creeds, uh, affiliations, phil philosophical and otherwise, can come. And so we need to build upon that. We need to build places and uh, where people can come together, where people can respect divergent and different opinions and not cast aspersions. But we learn by listening. And we learn more by listening to those we often and sometimes disagree with. That is the type of space that this should be. That's its heritage. Yes, ma'am, and I'll come to you, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, so those 88 statues that you said were well, the great majority of them just track military maneuvers. Uh, for instance, and uh, we have copies of the report available to you. Uh, a good example is uh, Johnson's 15th Corps slept here. <laughs> it's not inaccurate. It just lacks context as to, number one, what was the Battle of Atlanta being fought about? What was the consequence of the Battle of Atlanta? And one of the things I have to remind my friend, the good guys actually won the Battle of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and to a point, I've spent my life researching and studying history of the Civil War. The Civil War redefined freedom in America. One outgrowth of the Civil War was the abolishment of slavery. We should not turn our back on studying that conflict where 200,000 black men, 90% of them were former slaves, threw down their holes and marched off to fight for freedom for themselves and their family. What we have to distinguish between Civil War history and lost cause mythology. We should do everything, and that's a great point, which is my point. We need to leave here as quickly as possible and get back to work doing just what you just described and not be, as the attorney said, lulled. To, it's, it's not just a symbolic victory. To me, it's more than that. If symbols weren't important, it would not have been erected in, two, in 1908. Symbols are extremely important. But out of those symbols have to grow action. And you know, just like with faith, without works, it's dead. So yes, and just I'm leaving here on my way to Clarkson and over to Panola Road. Uh, we're having a food distribution today. We are attacking also food insecurity in DeKalb County. So however you can help, please lend your efforts in that regard. And uh, I'm sure the judges there on the fifth and sixth floor at our uh, judicial building, Judge Burl Anderson, our chief justice in the magistrate court, has been a leader on protecting people who are threatened with eviction in DeKalb County, Georgia. She's spoken to me about it on multiple occasions. And she's very sensitive and has already invested time and energy in ensuring that that does not take place. There's a cannon 100 feet from us that was erected by the same people that put up the Confederate monument at the exact same time celebrating the massacre of the Native Americans in 1836. When is that going to be removed? But, I can tell you. Let's continue to work. But let me just be honest with you. I'll tell you what I told Mayor Garrett. I'm all for it, but right now my number one priority is keeping 750,000 people alive. 
It just is. I'm just being honest with you. It takes up the lion's share of my time. I have lost 156,000 of my residents to COVID-19. The infection rate is rising in Georgia and 22 other states. So it's a prioritization of the issues. It's important, but my priority right now is keeping all of you and your families infection-free and alive. And I apologize if that doesn't fit the priorities that you have, but I love you so much <laughs> that that's where my time will be until we can get this uh, disease under control. That, by the way, disproportionately impacts African Americans. So help me keep black folk alive. I was telling my wife this before I left, and you all don't know that my father was a sharecropper. What replaced slavery in the South? Sharecropping. And I was born into a sharecropping family. I lived in a house without an indoor bathroom until I was 16. I went to segregated schools until I was in the 12th grade, school designed to ensure that I failed. So I get segregation, I get discrimination, but I also understand prioritization. Yes, ma'am. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's one of the goals I have for the celebration. See, most of us are not, quote, native bone to Cap County residents. The great majority of us moved here. And the consequence of being a booming suburban community is that the historical connection has been broken. What I hope to do is make that reconnection to those who established and built and helped to build DeKalb County, as well as those who are making DeKalb County one of the greatest, most diverse counties in America. We can only do it, though, if we appreciate and understand in a more significant way the history of DeKalb County. Thank you. All right, thank you all so much. God bless you.